Hey guys, it's Shannon from That DIY Couple. Today I'm going to teach you all about how I start my seeds indoors by planting them, getting a little grow light set up for them to grow in, transplanting them into bigger cups, and then moving them over into a larger grow light setup before taking them out to the garden. The very first thing you need to do though is get a member of your A team ready to help you out. Thanks, George. So I'm taking my Jiffy seed starting mix, which you can buy at Home Depot, and pouring a bunch of boiling water over it to kill any mold and bacteria that might be in there, which would impede the sprouting of seeds. This is a little makeup organizer that I got for free, and in it I've placed all of the seeds that I bought. Basically at the beginning of the season I got really excited, bought a bunch of seeds, and then went through them reading the backs and writing on the fronts of them exactly when I should, pl should plant them based on my growing region. So. I'm taking the seed starting mix and I'm putting it, once it's cooled down, into this little seed starting container, which you can buy at Home Depot. Just patting it down in there. You want to pack it kind of lightly so that the seeds have room to grow. And then I'm going to take a pencil and poke holes in it about a quarter inch deep and take the seeds and start to sprinkle them in. In the back of each packet, it should say about how deep and um, how, how far, far apart you want to space these. So I'm putting those in. It's fine to put more than one seed in each hole. In fact, it's even better. It's called overseeding. You can later trim it down to just the strongest ones. Then I'm finger packing this down by adding a little bit more Jiffy seed starting mix just to cover up the seeds lightly. I bought these tea labels at Home Depot. You can label them with a pencil, but I prefer this garden marker, which I ordered on Amazon. It just lasts a little longer. And if not, you can use a Sharpie. These are old spice containers that I use to store the remainder of my seeds. Makes it easy to directly sow layer. Okay, this is a storage tote that I bought at Home Depot. I've lined it with tin foil and I've put a bunch of duct tape on it to hold it there. And then I've cut holes in the top and I've just put a work lamp that you can buy at Home Depot with a very high lumens light bulb. I can link below the light bulbs that I use. This is a timer that I use to set for 18 hours a day of um, light on and then the rest of the day is off. Uh, and then they grow over time to be like this. You need to water them from the bottom um, and eventually they will grow to be something like this. Then you start to thin them out. You choose the ones that look strongest. So for me, that tends to be the fattest ones. And they'll become kind of root bound like this, but you can easily just break them apart once you've thinned it to the ones that you like. These are tomatoes. Um, they're not super sensitive, so you can break them up. Then you put a pole in the bottom and a hole in the side so you can water from the side and start to put them in these styrofoam cups once they're this size. Just kind of position them in the middle. With tomatoes, the hairy, um, roots will definitely develop into full-fledged root sends and I'm just putting regular garden soil in there. This is another big contraption that I've built. It's essentially a shelf with a bunch of grow lifts and this allows me to um, let my seeds grow a little bit longer before putting them out in the garden. And that's it you guys, that's how I start my own seeds indoors. This saves me a ton of money every year because um, the seed packets are really inexpensive, like a dollar or two, versus starting from something that Home Depot grew for you, um, which is like three dollars per plant or whatever. Um, you can grow a lot of food this way. My goal is to grow like 70 or 80 percent of our own food during the summer months, which is kind of an ambitious goal, but we'll see. I'm hoping that I can do it. Um, we're eating a whole food plant-based diet, so I think it's theoretically possible. Um, in our little backyard. So if you're interested in our suburban farming, urban homesteading journey, let us know. If you have different methods, let us know. We're just starting out. This is our second year gardening, so um, it should be a great adventure ahead. Let us know if you're interested in more gardening videos and if you have questions, comment down below. Guys, if you like these videos, please subscribe. It really helps us out and give us a thumbs up and share with your friends. Thanks so much. Until next time. Bye guys.